Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We continue to track Tropical Storm Debbie this evening, a strengthening system in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to talk about the latest track with this, plus a look at the storms out there this evening coming up. Plus, a family without a place to stay after this tree right here fell on their home. What they say was going through their minds when it happened and who is stepping in to help them during this difficult time. And a Go Raleigh bus driver stabbed just hours after a woman was stabbed at a bus station. How city leaders plan to address the violent issue to ensure the safety of other riders. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Julian Grace. The big story tonight, all eyes on Tropical Storm Debbie. Our latest update on the storm's track and intensity came in just about an hour ago. Here's what we know now. Debbie is a tropical storm right now with 65 mile an hour winds, but is likely to strengthen to a hurricane later tonight or overnight. Landfall in Florida is expected by midday to tomorrow and we expect a much weakened Debbie to move into North Carolina by midweek, but it will bring heavy rains and a potential for flooding. Anthony Baglione has been tracking Debbie closely all day, but first, Anthony, we have some rain happening right now in our viewing area. We do, Julian. This is kind of setting the stage for some of this tropical moisture coming into the area. Where we sit right now, we're going to start with radar, and then I promise you we're going to walk through all of the Debbie details here coming up in just a second. But we get us over to where we currently sit right now. You can see the general motion of most of these cells from the west to the east right now. Very similar actually to what we saw last night, just a little bit less coverage, and I don't expect any severe weather out there this evening. A uh, good downpour though coming through Wilson, Rocky Mount that just moved out of Clayton Smithfield. You see this little band right there though, that's what we call an outflow boundary. That may spark up some more cells right around Raleigh and Durham here the next couple minutes or so. Southern Pines, this is getting ready to head in your direction. There definitely is some lightning with that. Sanford, that could be affecting you as well. Dunn Fayetteville also tracking some light showers in that direction. We get a little bit closer here to the central part of our viewing area. Henderson, this batch is also pushing through. I-85 could be a bit active here the next couple of hours. That's about it, though. The next couple of hours, I think we should start to fizzle that coverage out right about midnight or so. No problems out the door for your Monday morning commute, so it's going to be a good start tomorrow morning. Here's the latest, though, on what is still Tropical Storm Debbie. This is the 5 o'clock advisory that came in. No change in the wind speed. That's still at 65 miles an hour. The center is is about 120 miles west of Tampa, Florida. The track, though, here's the latest update on that as well. Category one hurricane coming in there into Monday afternoon, one o'clock, two o'clock or so into the big bend of Florida. A big time stall is still showing up on many models, including this track. Those icons do not move much. We could be talking a tropical depression, a weaker system there joined into Friday. I want to stress, though, still the water, the rain with this system, that is going to be our biggest impact right now. We're going to talk about who could see some very concerning flooding potential coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, watching it all for us. Thank you, Anthony. Florida and Georgia are bracing for the storms and state authorities are urging people to prepare right now. Both states are under a state of emergency. Jenna Sullivan shows us the damage the storm is expected to cause. Parts of Florida already dealing with heavy rain as the Sunshine State braces for the full impact of Tropical Storm Debbie. We're going to be into a catastrophic rain situation. Near record warm temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are slowing the storm system, helping it gain strength before making landfall near Big Ben late Sunday night into Monday morning. The hazards in this situation are going to be tornadoes, strong wind gusts, inland flooding, and possible impacts well outside of the center of the storm. The city of Tampa giving out free sandbags to residents the past few days. The area is expecting three to five feet of storm surge on top of record rainfall. And I'm grateful for all these guys that are doing this for us. Some areas of Florida could see up to 30 inches of rain. This is a big storm. I mean, you're going to have rain that's going to be far beyond the center of the storm. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency and the state's National Guard on standby. The storm could dump up to 20 inches of rain on Georgia and the Carolinas over the next few days. Georgia and South Carolina also under a state of emergency Sunday. Jen Sullivan, WRAL News.
And you just heard it right there. South Carolina also under a state of emergency. Here on X, Governor Henry McMaster is sharing what could come with that potential impact of Tropical Storm Debbie. He mentions life-threatening urban river and flash flooding. Also warning South Carolinians to not wait too long. Get ready and make plans today, especially on the coast if you haven't already. We also got this update from the National Weather Service on X. Warning folks in South Carolina plus Southeast Georgia of all that heavy rain they could experience through Friday. The National Weather Service also warns that could include catastrophic flooding in both states. Hmm. Those updates will continue to come in. Thanks, Megan. First responders are making preparations for Debbie. The Wrightsville Beach Fire and Rescue firefighters are preparing personal hurricane kits. Now, inside those kits are extra clothes, uniforms, dry socks, and extra shoes. Captain Matt Holland shared his message on how residents should stay prepared. Be able to evacuate if you need to. Um, have your important documents ready. Have your prescription medications. Know, know what you're going to do with your pets, with your family members. Um, know where you're going to go if you have to, and just have this plan ready in case you need to put it in place. Now, over the phone, Captain Holland told me he's stressing to the public the importance of making sure your cell phone is fully charged. A family in Granville County is without a place to stay tonight after a tree fell on their home and it happened during the severe storms most of our area saw just yesterday. And we could see more of that after Debbie moves into North Carolina. WRL's Carly Haynes talked with that family. I want to give you a look at one of the homes that was destroyed in yesterday's storms. This happened at about 430 yesterday. The light pole in their yard snapped right there of falling over in their front yard. And then I want you to take a look at this tree right here toppling from its base. Those thick roots exposed and this entire tree fell onto the front of their house and on their roof, making it uninhabitable right now. We talked to the couple who lived here. They gave us a walk through their house as they were collecting some of their belongings. Uh, they happen to be sitting in the kitchen area, the opposite side of this house, when that tree toppled over. So luckily they weren't injured in this, but water started seeping in, filling their floors, and they had lived in this house for years. Shook up, and I don't really know what can be done, except the fact that where to go, where to live. We've been living here all that time. And all those years, we have memories, memories. And the couple did get some support from the Red Cross and some neighbors as they're dealing with what to do next. But all of that rain just really saturating the ground over the past few days. So we can expect more damage like this as more severe weather rolls through our area this week. Carly Haynes, WRL News, Grandel County. Okay, joining us right now live from Miami, Florida, is Jamie Rome, the deputy director of NOAA National Hurricane Center. And Jamie, it looks like you're going to get a firsthand look at Debbie tomorrow. What is the National Hurricane Center doing right this minute? We're really trying hard to message the heavy rainfall and the historic flooding that could occur with this system. I think a lot of people, especially here in uh, South Carolina and down east in, in North Carolina, aren't taking this seriously yet because they're looking just at the wind speed and saying it's just a tropical storm. And I'm telling you, if these rainfall amounts materialize as we're forecasting, it'll be anything but a tropical storm. Jamie, that is a great warning, but what do you expect the aftermath of all of this to be, especially along the East Coast? I think it's a little soon to unpack you know, the details, but what we're looking at here is anybody in this purple area here. So this is our highest risk. This is as high as we go is communicating the risk of flooding, you know, historic flooding. So this is high as we go. If this materializes, we're talking about days upon days of heavy rain, followed by days after that of the rivers being swollen out and creeks too out of their banks. I mean, this is really a concerning uh, developing situation for me. I grew up in this part of the country and I'm really concerned that people aren't taking it seriously. All right, thank you, Jamie. We will follow up, up with you in the coming days. Thanks again. Tonight, a Go Raleigh bus driver is recovering after being stabbed by a passenger. As WRL's Laura Levine reports, that comes just one day after a woman was stabbed at the Go Raleigh station. 
The vibrancy of downtown Raleigh on a nice summer day is sometimes overshadowed by what neighbors call a public health crisis. It has become a very serious problem, and a lot of a lot of it, I can say, is due to mental health issues, homelessness, and uh, you know, poverty in general. Concerns over public safety grow for those, especially who frequent the transit center near Moore Square. Do you feel safe riding the bus? Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. But I try to stay to myself, stay out of the way, don't don't confront anybody. This was the scene after a passenger stabbed a bus driver before 6 a.m. And on Saturday at 3.30 a.m., another stabbing. This time, police say a woman was attacked by someone she knew. The violence becoming too familiar to this community. I've called the police for three times for somebody here who was assaulted brutally. Three times. I took these issues to Councilman Corey Branch. He's the chair of the city's Transit and Transportation Committee. There's definitely more work to be done and more work that we are doing as a city. He says the city is prioritizing programs to help with homelessness and mental health. We just um, had some funding given to our Housing and Neighborhoods Department. They're working with community partners and um, nonprofits to put more boots on the ground, so to speak, that are non-police. Meanwhile, the Capitol Special Police Private Security has more boots on the ground to help RPD. Recent data shows crime near Moore Square is down 50%. Have you seen a difference so far? Absolutely. Chief Taylor tells me they aim to approach each encounter on their watch with awareness. Uh, stress that to the officers that we want to do everything we can to avoid putting somebody in the criminal justice system when they've obviously got some type of um, substance abuse problem or a mental health issue. And for those who ride the bus daily, they say more solutions must come sooner than later. In the 20 years I've lived here, this is not Raleigh. Laura Levine, WRL News in Raleigh. At this point, Raleigh police do not have anyone in custody related to the two stabbings. We're working to learn the condition of the victims. Noah Lyles is once again the world's fastest man. Check this out right here. Lyles won the gold in the men's 100 meter dash by just five thousandths of a second. You can see just how close that was in this photo. He was neck and neck with Jamaica's Keyshane Thompson. Lyles is now the first American man in 20 years to win gold in this event. And Novak Djokovic won his first gold Olympic medal. He knocked out Spain's Carlos Alvarez in straight sets. It was an emotional win for him as he held his family tight after that win. Djokovic has become the fifth player in history to win a career gold slam. I should say golden slam, excuse me. Well, North Carolina State University swimmer Katherine Bergkopf secured a gold medal. She raced in a preliminary heat for the 4 by 100 meter medal relay and the semifinal. Now, Bergkopf did not race in the final, but will still get the medal for helping the United States get there. She won the bronze medal on Tuesday in the 100 meter backstroke final. Checking in on the standings tonight, the U.S. is in the lead with the amount of medals coming in at 71. The U.S. is tied with China, who is in second place for the same amount of gold medals. France, Great Britain and Australia aren't too far behind, as you see right there. A journalist from Africa with North Carolina ties is living out his dream of covering the Olympics, but it came with a lot of roadblocks. Coming up, the obstacles that were standing in his way and how he managed to overcome them. And meteorologist Anthony Baglion will be back with more on our rain chances and tropical storm Debbie. Welcome back now to the summer games where one African journalist with North Carolina ties is living his dream. WRL's Liz McLaughlin has more from Paris. Liz. So we're talking about someone who has cleared his share of hurdles but is not an athlete. Uh, we introduce you to a journalist from Ghana whose North Carolina education helped him punch his ticket to Paris. It soon became obvious that I wasn't going to go anywhere with my sporting career, so I chose languages. A passion for communication that took root in high school shaped his path to journalism in college. When he went from a bustling Ghana campus to intimate Elon University in North Carolina for his senior year. The University of Ghana had, let's say probably at the time, maybe like 35,000 students. 
for one school and I come to Elon and the total population is probably like 2,500 or maybe 3,000 at the most. He knew the media world was his calling and stayed steadfast to his goals despite employment roadblocks after graduation. I kept interning at a radio station for free. And I just kept sharpening my skills and sharpening my skills until maybe three years after graduation that I finally had a full-time contract. Then a new dream set in, covering the Olympics, a dream that, like so many athletes, took perseverance to achieve. I applied to cover London 2012. I was denied. I applied to cover Rio 2016. I was denied. I applied to cover uh, Tokyo 2020. I was denied. And this, Paris, is the first time ever I got accredited. A gold medal feeling to see the world's best athletes with a press pass around his neck. And it's a dream just to be here covering the Olympic Games. It's absolutely wonderful. And I can tell you, as a fellow journalist on the ground, it's an incredible experience, but also incredibly tiring. Up for 22 hours yesterday covering all the action because Team USA got 18 medals. The last time they did that was 1988 at the Seoul Games. Julian. All right, thanks, Liz. Let's bring Anthony back in. Anthony is coming down right now. I'm staring at the beautiful rainbow just out of that shot there, Julian. It looks beautiful out there with some of those kind of clouds in the distance. We have that moisture coming down, and then it's pouring down rain for some of us across the area. So if you see any pictures of rainbows, we'd love to see them. You can send them our way, WRL.com and Weather Watches. Weather Watchers is what you search on there. Let's talk about where we sit, though, on radar right now, because, yes, there have been some big-time downpours for some of us across the area. You you see that general movement there from the west to the east, pushing through Henderson, Lewisburg. This is likely heading toward Roanoke Rapids here pretty shortly. Red Oak, Rocky Mountain, these are all pushing along, though. They're not going to sit for very long, so that's good news. We're not looking at any severe weather tonight. We had a little bit closer to, let's say, Rocky Mount, Wilson, Goldsboro. You can see also that general track. There's a pretty potent cell pushing through at downtown Raleigh right now. Sanford, Southern Pines, this is also moving just to the south, probably approaching Fayetteville as we get through the next half an hour or so. We look at future casts, though. Over the next couple hours, here's what we're looking at. I do think we'll hang on to some scattered storms for us tonight, probably tapering off, though, closer to about midnight or so. There's a look at 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. We head into our Monday morning itself. You should be just fine. I don't think we'll have any issues out the door. It will be dry. We'll see a good deal of cloud cover across the area. We get to the tropics, though. Here's Tropical Storm Debbie. Very busy tracking this for us. 65 mile per hour winds currently. That was the latest 5 o'clock advisory from the Hurricane Center. This does go in as a Category 1 hurricane there into tomorrow afternoon. 85 mile per hour winds. The big concern with this system, though, continues to be it's stalling really over the Carolinas, Georgia, South Carolina. The latest advisory from them does have this weakening to a tropical depression by Friday. I don't want you to see that and think though we're out of the woods. It's going to totally fizzle out because the flooding potential from this is really going to be there. We check out some of the projected rainfall totals. These will fluctuate a little bit as we get this system kind of on the other side of Florida. They are looking at 15 plus inches of rainfall, isolated pockets of 30 inches of rain for Charleston down into South Carolina. Wilmington, for instance, 10 to 15 inches of rain across most of our viewing area, 5 to 10 over the next seven days. So I know that over the next seven days, you may think it's spread out a little bit. It's going to be a very big rainmaker. Flooding potential is definitely going to be our concern. We're not looking at much impact tomorrow, though. Just an isolated storm or two is going to be possible. There's a look, though, at that extreme flooding risk, including Charleston, Savannah. This does not come out very often. So I think especially for South Carolina, and southeastern North Carolina. This is going to be a big rainmaker. 84 there on Tuesday. We see temperatures in the low 80s. It'll feel a little bit better, but it'll be muggy with that tropical moisture there, Julian, for really the next couple of days, mid to late week into early next weekend. All right, thanks, Anthony. Casey, the Wolfpack making noise in the Olympics. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, well, you know, what? we've heard so much about the NC State swimmers in the Olympics, right? But the pack also have their medal in tennis. I'll tell you significance behind that plus. Carolina Panthers first rounder leaves practice early. What we know about Xavier Lee gets injury next. Ah, uh, the countdown is on. Sit tight, folks. We're just five Sundays away from sitting on the couch all day long, taking in every possible second of NFL action. But the good news is we don't have to wait 
that long for action because the Carolina Panthers opened the preseason on Thursday at New England. But we might have to wait to see this year's first round pick. In a hold your breath kind of a moment, rookie wideout Xavier Leggett had to exit practice earlier today, reportedly suffering a leg injury. Leggett already missed some practice time this spring due to a hamstring injury that caused him to really miss most of the organized team activities as well as the entirety of mandatory minicamp. Now, while head coach Dave Canales didn't have many other details, he did say that today's incident was not related to the hamstring injury. It's something in his lower leg. I don't want to get into any details. We're just going to evaluate him this afternoon as a precaution, and then we'll uh, go from there. I'll have more information for you guys. I got no indication on it. They just kind of was like, okay, he's, he's got something going on. We sent him in. I want to kind of keep it like that for now. When I get more information, I promise I'll, I'll let you know. Ian Rappaport of NFL Media reports that x-rays of Lee Getz's leg were negative. For Panthers reporter David Newton just sent out a follow-up tweet a short time ago saying Lee Get had an MRI that ruled out a fractured foot, so his status is day to day. What the Olympics, one traditional sporting powerhouse, is absent from the scene mostly. Russia is fielding just 15 athletes, a result of Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. Those 15 athletes are competing as individual neutral athletes. And one of those is former NC State tennis star Diana Schneider, who helped earn the first medal for any Russian athlete at the 2024 Olympics. Schneider, alongside her partner, Mira Andreeva, won silver in the women's doubles. The pair lost the gold medal match in a tiebreaker against an Italian duo. The former ACC Freshman of the Year is the pack's first tennis player to make the Olympic Games. Big congrats to her. Well, Suni Lee held down the fort as the only American in today's uneven bars final, earning a bronze and successfully defending her podium finish in Tokyo. Lee earned a 14.8 to become the first U.S. woman to win two Olympic medals in the event. Lee and Simone Biles will contend for a B medal tomorrow, which is the final day of gymnastics in Paris. Julian, what are we going to do with the gymnastics over? That's oh. been one of my favorite events this entire week. It's always so much fun to watch. So. It has been so much fun, and they put on a fantastic show. Congratulations Absolutely. to them all. Thank you so much for bringing that entertainment to us. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you later tonight. Have a great evening.